That is not good. Start again. This is Omar for Box Nation. We're in Birmingham, uh, Queensbury weighing, may I add. Uh, your guy, Shabazz Masood, just weighed in uh, with Liam Davis. We weren't really sure. It could have gone off the way things have been going, but it was like a, a you know, a, a fierce uh, stare down, but there was respect at the end, a handshake. They know what they're in for tomorrow night, Frank. Yeah, very respectful. Look, it's a great fight. The two of them coming together. Respect to them both for taking this fight. You know, it's a, it's a real fight. IBO title on the line. Um, and yeah, like you said, the, the week has been, I've seen, I haven't been up here, but the press conference it was a bit fiery yesterday. Um, it's been a long build up as well. You know, this fight was scheduled for what, back in August originally, or maybe July? Even before that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's been a long time coming. Um, but they're both ready to go, and I believe Shabazz does the job tomorrow night. Okay, why is that? Because I think he's just going to go in there, I think he's an elite fighter, and I think he's going to go in there, get the win, and then big nights to come. Do you think it's important? I mean, you know me, I'm not the tactics guy. <laughs> I speak to the people who do the tactics, and uh, yeah, no, but I, I believe he's, it's a tough fight, it's a real fight, but that's what we're here, you know, that's what we're here to see. Do you think it's important early on to be wary, because we know how dangerous Liam is early on? Yeah, look, he's a big puncher, we know that, we know that, he's a big puncher, but, you know, I think... This is a huge opportunity, and Shabazz knows what he needs to do. Um, so he knows what the risks are, obviously, but then Shabazz has got his own ability to go in there and deliver the job. I feel like this is the moment Shabazz has been working towards because he's, he's been around the scene for quite a while, but hasn't really had that, that big fight. This is it. Yeah, yeah, look, I think, obviously, look, we signed him. He, um, he was supposed to fight on our Liverpool show. I think he got ill. Sorry, a bit lower. Uh, he was supposed to fight then... We got him out quickly, headline the next gen chat. Wasn't the most entertaining performance ever we've seen. But, you know, he got that ring rust off he, and, and kept active. Then had the, the fight in replacement of this fight back in July, mm -hmm. I think that was. Um, and now he's back out again now. So he's really got that momentum now to build on and going into this fight. Um, so, you know, he's, he's been around, the name's been there. That's why we signed him, you know, because we saw what was there. We saw the ability, but now he's got to go and deliver on the biggest stage. Frank, we see, um, as you've got someone in the main event, uh, Matram sort of on the banners. Now, we've seen that across all the Riyadh season stuff, uh, which we're accustomed to now. But moving forwards into next year and years to come specifically, with Queensbury and Matram, whether it's um, your guy, like in this scenario, headlining um, in a main event with, uh, on a Queensbury show or a Queensbury guy main event in on a matchroom show do you think we're going to see a lot more of this away from Riyadh season cards yeah 100 percent. and look this just shows like the relationship is good don't get me wrong it took someone to come in and bring us together of course it did and money was a you know people say money was a factor in that obviously at the time we we're all running a business and we want to do what's best but now as you see with shows like this with fights like this it's about making the best fights and that's what we've seen here it's the best fight two best coming together we're not precious about look we've got a job to deliver for our broadcaster as have um queensbury but at the same time if we can make fights that make sense on each of our cards we'll do that and we've done that over the last i don't know six nine months since we've been working together so it's it's now a real relationship where we're going to do good business and make great fights and this is a perfect example of it and yeah long more long may it continue and uh it's, it's beneficial for the sport it's going to be continue to be beneficial and we're going to see fights that people want to see not sure how accurate this is, but from what I hear behind the scenes, deals recently between yourself, George, Queensbury get done really quickly. Yeah, look, we made, I think, this fight we made very quickly between us. You know, we made uh, Peter McGraw against Dennis McCann, you know, within, I don't know, 24, 36 hours, that one. You know, so it's, it doesn't have to be difficult. You know, if you want to do business and you want to see great fights, it doesn't have to be difficult, you know. Um, I did put in today's contract, though, that I had to stand within a metre of Frank um, on the stage. And because Frank wasn't here, they said I wasn't allowed up there. So, you know, there is a bit of a problem there. And, you know, the, the, the matchroom logo was three inches, actually too small. So I will be sending a complaint to George later about that. Just to clear up, that is sarcastic, of course. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm very sarcastic. I was talking to Frank Shalom there. Hey, don't, don't start all that. You know, don't bring him into it. OK, um, Frank, away from this, um, WBO have got their convention. Actually, first I'll mention um, Paco, uh, the great Paco, legend of the sport, uh, stepping down. Yeah. Uh, Gustavo takes the rein there. So didn't expect that news yesterday from WBO. Yeah, look, Paco obviously done unbelievable things for the sport over the years. Gustavo, though, we've got a great relationship with as, as of a number of people. And it's good to see new young faces coming through in the sport because... 
don't know, Paco, it's 70s. I maybe? don't want to put a na- an yeah. age on it, but... It, it, he's older, you know. Um, but it's good to see young young people coming in sport. Gustavo's been with the WBO a long time. He's great to work with, as I'm sure every promoter will say. So, yeah, excited about that. And uh, it's good to see them all working together. Um, Frank, I spoke to Frank Warren yesterday, and he said that he's heard, guessing from, from you guys or 258, that Joshua's got an injury at the moment and won't be fighting Dubois in February. So what can you tell me about that? Yeah, I think that's as, as, as we've been saying. Obviously, the reality is he's got to be fit and ready. And I think a February fight, which was the talk, he wouldn't be ready for. You know, it's the biggest fight of his career now, coming back from, you know, whatever the next step is, is the biggest fight. So he needs to be in peak condition. Um, you know, fighters have niggles, fighters aren't always ready. And, you know, February will be too tight. I think so. Obviously, that means Daniel Dubois is going to do what he needs to do. He needs to fight. Um, so we'll, we'll see how things play out and go from there. You know, it doesn't mean that fight can't happen in the future. It's just the February date is impossible. From a cynical point of view, uh, mm. a lot of the response online has been he doesn't want to fight Daniel Dubois mm. next straight away, and maybe he's not injured. That's mm. going right if you're being really critical and cynical. Yeah, I mean, look, he showed throughout his career he's not shy of... He got beat by Andy Ruiz, went straight back in there. He got beat by Alexander Usyk, went straight back in there. He's not scared of taking challenges, otherwise he wouldn't have gone into these fights in the first place. You know, that is Anthony Joshua as a person. Um, but he's at the stage of his career where everything has to be right, and he's not going to go into a fight where he's not 100%, and he shouldn't, you know. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how things play out. You know, there's the Tyson Fury-Alexander Usyk fight, December 21st. That's a massive fight if AJ fought him, you know, Tyson Fury, regardless of results. So, you know, people will talk, they always do, but they, they should know now Anthony Joshua's character as he goes in there and he takes fights. Well, that was going to be my next question. Whenever Anthony does come back, I'm looking at the division and there's only like three sizable fights for me. The Usyk trilogy, depending yeah. on what happens with Fury, the Fury fight and the Daniel Dubois rematch. Like, if you're not doing a rebuilding process, which Eddie has mm. said we're not going to again, mm. those are really the three names that spring to mind. I agree. I agree. I think, look, I think Tyson Fury is the natural fight that everyone wants to see regardless of all these results. Um, but, yeah, there's not a whole host of names. He's fought all of them as well. You know, the majority of them are in and around that, in and around the division. So we'll see as well. Look, Daniel Dubois is going to fight someone else. They'll be, we'll see what plays out there, who his opponent is, who... You know, and he, he could get beat. Anything's possible in this sport, as we've seen, especially in the heavyweight division. So, you know, focus right now is anything can change in the next week, two weeks, as it always does. But um, AJ will be back when he's fit and ready to be back. The only thing commercially that perhaps would make sense, if Wilder is to continue, is that something you guys could look at? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I think, I don't know what Wilder's thinking, to be honest. He's had a tough road, hasn't he? So, and, he and he's made a lot of money. So we'll have to see... Uh, what plays out there, but that is also a, a, a big fight. All of these fights, forget about, I think what's good now, forget about results. We just all want to see fights that interest us. And all of these names that you mentioned there are fights that interest us. So take the results out of it. It's about seeing great fights in the sport. Lastly, have you been keeping up with Clapback Thursdays? Uh, I, I saw uh, Oscar as a joker at the press conference with a nun, who is his missus, coming on. I thought it was actually quite funny. Um, I didn't see the latest Clapback Thursday, uh, but I heard it. it well, did he sing a song or something on this one? He did, yeah. Yeah. He's, I think he's great value. I think he's great. He hasn't said anything about you What's yet. That? So he hasn't said anything exactly, about Exactly, that's why I think he's brilliant. So long may it continue, Oscar. Keep, keep mugging people off. He did have a little pop at British boxing fans. I don't know if you saw did that. Did he? Yeah. Uh, what did he say? We don't know shit about the sport. Yeah, but this is where Oscar's got it completely wrong. Because I saw he went at PBC about um, t- Tim Zoo getting beat. And his whole thing is about people getting beat, where it's like, I know obviously no one wants to get beat, I get that. But we all want to see great fights. And Oscar's big thing now is Matchroom can't make fights, uh, can't match make fighters. PBC can't match make fighters. It's like, what, because people get beat. So what do we want for a sport where you know every winner? You know, if that's what he's trying to say, basically, is... You know, he's got that mentality of everyone should, you know, keep their O, which I get, but at the same time, it's not about, that doesn't make the best fights in the sport, does it? Um, so, but yeah, I find him fun to watch. Would you like to see a, a match in v Golden Boy 5v5? I think it would be fun, yeah. I think it would be, I think it would be a big win for us. Okay. Not, not a 10-0 defeat. <laughs> Frank, appreciate your time and uh, good luck to Shabazz Masu tomorrow. Cheers, pal. Thanks, mate. Cheers.